All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are doing slightly better than you were yesterday. I have the man, the myth, the guy with now two lights in frame. We only had one light last time. We got Jeremy Berlin here at his, uh, his new desk. Jeremy, you're looking good. You're looking swell. How has the market been for you this it's been week? great. And uh, actually, this is me. I figured out how to put my camera frame in from standard to HD. <laughs> That's how Love. good with technology I am. Uh, I like it. I like it. But yeah, this this week has been awesome. Um, I did have a, a little snafu yesterday that turned out very good. But man, if, if this was a different position, I would have been having to you know, change. So let's go into that a little bit on that snafu. We were talking a little bit on that earlier. I think the the biggest the biggest takeaway from that is how did you manage your emotions during that first first let people know what the snafu was but then how did you manage those emotions during the snafu because you almost well not almost you did you had an ultimatum overall i can either do this or this but otherwise i can't do anything else so tell us a little bit about that and how you manage those emotions during that that was that was the hard part and thankfully it, it wasn't a massive position but it was a position that could have cost me a few bucks so um, what happened was I was, I was short two MES contracts going into the close yesterday. I was anticipating being a bearish move on, on, uh, Amazon's, uh, earnings announcement. And typically right before the bell, you'll get a big drop candle on Amazon when it's in this situation. And, uh, sure enough, we did. And then it went back up and that's what made me nervous about the whole thing. But about 15 minutes <clears throat> before the bell, I had this position on and then suddenly there was a glitch on my on my brokerage account and I couldn't access my my position or the account at all. It was just locked out. So here I am like ninth in the queue to talk to him on a, on a chat. Um, couldn't get him on the phone. I tried to get him on the phone. I get busy saying, you know, everybody panics and calls their break your broker when this, something like this happens. It, it happens. Get me out. Um, get me out. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, getting a busy signal, can't get through to them. I'm sure everybody else and their mother was experiencing the same thing with probably much bigger positions on. But I was okay because I was watching SPY. I couldn't get any futures data, but I was watching SPY. And I'm like, okay, this, is, this isn't bad. This isn't going to hurt me. I'm two contracts in. Worst case scenario, I lose a few hundred bucks if this thing blows up in my face. Big deal. Um, I didn't have a bracket order on, and now I'm, I'm starting to use brackets a lot more now. And I know there's <laughs> some people that like brackets, some people don't like brackets, but I'm telling you, after yesterday, I like brackets. <laughs> so. Brackets are your friend. I try to tell people this all the time. I look, I go, if you cannot define your position well enough to put a bracket order on, then you really don't understand the market you're working with. And I will agree that there are times that you – there's enough volatility. We get like we have a uh, one and a half time, two times relative volume in the market. Okay, maybe that's okay. not the time for a bracket order because bracket orders are very well, they're stiff by nature. And sometimes you right. do have to allow a little bit of market intuition and things. But at the end of the day, with even the current market, even like right now on the spy, we're, we're ranging that 385, that 386 on there. Okay, is it, it. So, <laughs> yeah. is it so outlandish to have a Let's say you get a bear position on here at the 385 break and you go, OK, well, I see we've been raging at the top at 386. I'm going to set my bracket trailing stop bracket here to bring myself down every uh, 0.1 delta. And then I, if we reverse, OK, whatever, my cost basis is at 385. But if we continue to just run our way down and we see natural breath is two or three uh, delta right. on that, then we know to make our adjustments on there. And then the best part is, um, have you got have you gotten into scale out brackets just yet? Um, not necessarily scale out brackets yet, but I've just been basically running, um, you know, I'll take profit at, I, I got it way out there because I like to just be able to sit with the cancel all button and ready to exit the trade. Um, I'll run it like 400 ticks out for the profit side. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. trailing side, I've been running like 16 ticks seems to work pretty well in this condition, but the market conditions change. You get bigger breath and smaller breath. And this is just one of those exactly. beats where 16 works. May not always and like work. with the mi the micros as well, as people start to get into doing yeah. six and eight micros, that's a great time to start to learn in those scale out brackets for those unaware. If you're going bullish or bearish, doesn't matter. You got an eight lot that's on there. You can actually set it off to where you can pull off four, two and two as right. you're going down. 
you structure this order before you ever put it in. And many of them allow you to save it as a template. If you ever look through my, my setup, I've got, I've got templates for everything. I've got swing templates, night templates. I've got ES, oil, NQ templates, because they're all different when it comes to it. And um, as you start putting on more size, I talked about this um, how the other day, I ended up accidentally putting on a hundred lot of the NQ instead of a, a 10 lot of the NQ. And I went, huh, well, that was a mistake. I made money on the trade, but I hate making money on trades I did not intend to have. So when you yes. start running higher order sizes, uh, 10s, 20s, 30s, 50s, whatever, you you have to get into scaling in and scaling out and utilizing bracket orders is wonderful for that. You can check out videos. I did a video for the bullish bears, oh God, four years ago now. Uh, I, it's actually still on the YouTube there. And then I did another one for money.net. And uh, I think you've done a video on it before too. I may be wrong on that one, but I think you've done I, a video on. I did one on the reverse button. Um, I haven't done one on brackets mm -hmm. yet, but I did one on I say, well, the reverse there button. you go. There, there's an idea. So look for one on Jeremy there as well. Maybe we'll do that during the wheel trade thing as well one day and talk about how you can, uh, you can bracket in and out of that because brackets are, um, if you set them as good till cancel, they're indefinite. They just keep on rocking and rolling. I've had positions. I didn't even realize the asset was going through a, uh, going it was in a longer term portfolio I didn't even realize that the asset was going through a split on there right. and the uh, next thing i know i get an email and it says uh, trade confirmation this account i went that account didn't sell anything i didn't have anything and i haven't touched that account in six months and then i i go i log in i look at it, i go oh well i guess i had a bracket order on this all right there you go <laughs> so they're set and forgets but jeremy as we move into this calmer market overall um are you getting back to selling premium or do you think uh as the tail end of the month here we're going to see heavier institutional buying to where maybe selling premium isn't the best idea and we have to run with our uh, our slightly macro trends. I mean, what, what's your idea moving into the tail end of the month here? In the tail end, I'm going to start looking for swing trades first, and then I might get into whether we're going to start trending. Um, from what I can see in the market, we've, we've got a good chance of coming back and, and touching that, that uh, weekly 200 period on a general index is at least one more time. There's a good chance of that. So I'm looking at look at a few bearish swing trades possibly into that, depending on what next week brings us. Um, but I could be wrong. It could also go and, and break out to the bull side and I'm ready to go and swing long. Um, as far as positioning goes though, I think if, if I start to see that, that trend into the bull side, I might start picking up a few wheel trades um, and, but if I see it going to the bear side, obviously I'm going to sit on that and wait, wait and patiently apply that uh, strategy as it's necessary. So um, in this market, I think most of the volatility is behind us for now, uh, it, you know, with these uh, earnings that came out and gosh, a bunch of big caps got kind of slaughtered in that, um, you know, one would begin to think, okay, this, this has got to find a bottom somewhere, but um, it's still... I think we're still in a consolidation period and I think we might probably even see it start to just continue consolidating into next week before we start to get some actual direction for long-term trends in the market. So that's the way it looks to me. Um, but I'm, I'm always looking for opportunity and I'm always ready to adapt to the market in any way it brings me. But for now, I'm still a short-term trader. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to start really swinging much until I start to see some, some direction. Um, hmm. And then to kind of kind of go back in, uh, reopen the managing your emotions thing on that whole situation being locked out of your broker. Well, no, I've had that happen. It sucks. I've done that before. So there's still some videos of where I went large on positions, had no idea, and was in the wrong accounts, and things right. happen. We're all human, but yes. And it was just you know I was I was a little stressed, but I wasn't too worried. So it was two MES contracts. I mean, it was it wasn't a whole lot of risk in there. It was in my bigger account, so I'm not too worried about it. it had it been a small account? Uh, you know, if it would have been my, like one of my like two fifty to five hundred dollar accounts, I would have been a little worried. But uh, you know, at this point, I was in my large account. I'm like, I'm not going to sweat this. But if it was two ES contracts, I would have been a little nervous at that point. <laughs> I probably would have had to change clothes. So it, maybe even a chair. Wait, just wait until we get you into oil. Just wait uh, until we get you into oil, man. Oil is a uh, is a different animal overall but it there's still a lot of similarities in that and uh, it's it, it's refreshing to have a conversation with you on uh, on your journey 
through the it's, futures market. It's been a very long time since I've spoke to someone who was you know, just really starting in it, <laughs> keeping on it, staying solid with it. And uh, it, it's one of those things that um, you will start to find other contracts that you really, really like. And right. I... You know, I, I'm going to be remiss to say that when you get into oil or you get into beans or even trading uh, uh, other other future setups there, uh, energy, uh, net gas, um, you you may actually start to go, wow, I'm spending three out of five trading days in the week just in the futures market. I have traders that are long-term options people. Boom. Yeah. Futures market. Go to futures. That's kind of what I've noticed. Like I've, I've almost, I haven't forgotten how to swing trade, but it's like, I've been so focused on futures trading. Like I've, I'm barely touching the options market lately and I'm running a couple spreads here and there, but mostly it's just overnights or day trading um, as far as uh, my options trades go. And it's typically just on, on a couple little large caps. I'm not even messing with SPY right now because the implied volatility has just been outrageous this week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been just kind of pointless to, to throw that risk in there. So I just went straight to futures. And it's to me, it's like I'm, I'm grateful that I have this variety of tools to apply to the market. So like if, if I feel that I'm not going to have um, a good enough risk to reward ratio going into options, I can go and trade the futures. It's just another tool to trade the market. So I've been grateful for that. I mean, I'm, I have been drawn to futures like, you know, you wouldn't believe it's, it's been kind of my bias lately, but I know there'll, there'll be a point where I will be able to go back into more long-term options trades. And I think we're, we're going to be there in a week or two, I think is, is going to be what it's all about. But um having having this ability to to day trade is is the most important part and that's you know fundamentally that's picking up price action and and i kind of went into a long-winded explanation on on what to do as far as new traders starting out is to start with price action mm -hmm. and i got into like okay well go paper trade a futures account in fact uh trade of eight's paper account trades exactly like the live account it's it's the same. So like you can go in and find a pattern that you like to trade, go and look for that pattern on a 10 second chart, trade it over and over and over again, beat it to death until you've got it down to where you glance at it and make a move and make a profit. When you're consistent on that pattern, try it in your live account a couple of times, just trade the chart, ignore the money ball, trade the chart, build a couple trades, make a couple bucks, you know, pay for your, your data subscription, go back to your paper account, Find another pattern that you want to practice a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Do that pattern over and over and over again. Rinse and repeat the process till you have about four or five patterns that you're very solidly trading with consistency. And then now you've built a bag of tools to adapt to market conditions. Like you'll you'll see, like you'll hear me saying in my live streams, like, hey, we've been trading these uh, channel breaks with the 50% retracements over and over and over again. It's been great. And then they disappeared. So then we went into, well, what's the next pattern that's going to be popular? Uh, double bottoms. Okay, we'll trade the crap out of double bottoms, you know, and it, it worked out great. But having that arsenal of, of different patterns that you can trade consistently opened up to more than just one or two patterns, having like five or six of them even, uh, you kind of get into where you can you can measure the risk, the reward, you can build a trade plan, and you can trade it at a glance on a 10 second chart, and then apply that to your swing trading. Because all those patterns are the same, no matter what time frame you're looking at. And when you can start seeing how the market moves and how to take advantage of different conditions, different patterns, and you've got that arsenal, that's how you build your, your ability to be a consistently profitable trader, um, starting from nothing, learning price action fundamentals first, and then going into the options world, where not only are you able to trade directionally with options, but you're able to have long-term options positions that you can adjust on the fly to adjust to every market condition. You can add legs, take legs off. You can, you can have synthetic positions, partially synthetic positions, collars millions of ways of, of going with options to where you can expand your ability to, to just change with the leaves, so to speak, and, and absorb every bit of market that you can. And it all starts with price action. It all starts at the very root. You know, and that's the thing. I'm looking at the price action on the SPY right now, doing a measured move up there to yeah. that uh, 387 area is looking like where they're going to try and put a ceiling and then do a rollover on it, trying to make a bull trap out of it now. You know, something yep. uh, I spoke about many years ago, and I still talk about it, is find one bullish, one bearish, and one range pattern. 
If you can find those three, that gives you a nice rounded cake for it. And just focus on it. So many people that go, I want to learn all of these patterns, that patterns. I went, that's cool. You don't hop in a 488, you know, and just freaking rip the track up. You got to <laughs> learn to go slow. You got to learn to go slow and learn what you're doing. Then you can go fast on things. And I always say that statement too, is that I do not trade stocks i do not trade futures contract i don't trade any of that i trade people overall i trade the sentiment of what's going on in the market well if all of these people are looking at the same stop sign at this intersection and we know that at three o'clock a bus comes through because school's letting out okay well if we know that that's a reoccurring thing when we get to the stop sign at three o'clock guess what i'm gonna be looking for there's a bus coming through so that's kind of the same thing with your price action if you know you're in a bull flag and you see a 60% or greater sentiment break of that, you go, okay, well, 6% or greater of the participants of this particular auction are breaking out of this stop sign that we've seen before the bull flag. We have an XYZ probability of going up to this next business zone here. So I think that's important. All right, Jeremy, I want to be respectful of your time overall on this one. If people want to get a hold of you, learn some more, where can they find you at? Well, bullish bears first. Um, and then I've, I've got, my Twitter account, it's, it's starting to build a few followers. Um, I think there's a, a link below. It's just, just scalp at J and, or at just scalp at J. Uh, that's my handle on Twitter for now. And I might change it later, but um, for now. King it's, of the uh, micros. That's going to be your next one. King of the micro contracts. I like it. I, I used to go by like scalp master J for fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a, oh, I've had a few. I just, I have, I have a sense of humor when it comes to the market and it's like, I just envision the meme. Okay. What's the, what's the most fun name I can put out there that, that just completely puts, uh, is, that paints a picture in your mind of, of what my mindset is towards the market, you know? And, uh, it, you know, I'll come up with stuff that's just funny. Like pushing premium was, was a fun one. I like that. You know, I, that I like was that my one. handle for a while too. And you know, I'm kind of thinking like, maybe I'll have a few other accounts. I just open multiple accounts where I can just have these different names. So I can just talk in them in that sense of mind in the markets. Like if I'm seeing it's bearish, I can go with, you know, just scalp it or I can adapt to any, any name and just start talking on it. I kind right. of want to do as, that. As long as your accounts <laughs> don't start arguing with each other, yes. we're good. Cause that's <laughs> when we know we have an issue. So that's the fun part. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out the description below and, uh, we're going to be doing some fun stuff with Jeremy and the Bullish Bears team coming forward. If you have any questions, always feel to reach out to either us or them. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe so that we can continue to grow both the Money.net and the Bullish Bears family on this one. Make sure you are keeping a track on your stops and your journaling your trades. But as nice. always, remember, your trades are in the history. We'll see you around. See you next see week, you guys. See ya.